morning, Michael. Good morning, Daniel. Good morning, guys. And this is Running Around Jerusalem, episode two. We're on a beautiful morning in Jerusalem. We're gonna run a five and a half kilometer run. We're gonna see some stuff on the way. Michael, what are we seeing today? So we are basically focusing today on Jerusalem, the old and the new. We are standing right now at the entranceway to the city. And we're gonna start at the modern entranceway. We're gonna make our way towards one of the ancient entranceways down to Jaffa Gate. We're gonna get have a little bit of a tease going into the old city there and end up in a beautiful park. So that's basically the run. Sounds great. And as normal, you can find all the specs on the run, the route and everything on Facebook. We're gonna, we're gonna put a link on the route on Facebook. Run with us, enjoy the route, check out the route. Ready to get going? Let's go run. You ready? All let's right, go, let's go. La, 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 la. Okay, so Michael, last night you sent me an email saying today's theme is old versus new. What, what, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> What's old versus new? Is it two football teams? Like, what was happening? Well, think of this. But the cool thing about being in Jerusalem in a 4,000 year old city is that none of the new things that we're seeing yeah. are in different spots or necessarily, you know, new concepts. Right. This is a perfect example where we are right now. Yeah. Okay. We're going over this light rail bridge right now, which has become a iconic uh, landmark. For sure. But we're at the entrance of the city. Yeah. And if you look over here, <coughs> you see all the different construction cranes, right? Which they say is the national bird of okay. Israel. Yeah, right. But what, what's going on here? They're actually building a huge commercial complex here at the entrance of the city. Right, I saw a high-tech park. Exactly. Yeah. But those who are familiar with the Bible or archaeology know that in ancient times, the entrance gates to the cities are where all the trade happened. You had worship sites there. This is where the gatherings happened. Really? Um, yeah, we talk about, for example, in the Bible, it says, you know, you shall place guards and judges right. at your city. Or there are number, numerous stories of people saying, okay, we're going to go see the elders at the gates of the cities. Right. And in fact, archaeologically, we find all across the land of Israel and even throughout the Middle East and other places, right. that in the entrances to the cities, you have all these different chambers, you have storage rooms where they would have collected goods and stuff for taxes coming in, you have big plazas where you would have had marketplaces. So we spoke about the gates. On my right, I've got the high-speed rail. On the left, this is Jerusalem's bus station. This is the new light rail where we have through the city. So we really are at the gate of the city here, right? Yeah, 30 minutes right now, you can be in the heart of Tel Aviv. Right. Pretty amazing. And if you remember, when we talked about before, they used to, before they put any kind of train in here, it was like a 10-hour drive. Yeah, we spoke about that last time. But let's say you're not taking the train. Yeah. Let's go the old-fashioned way, let's take a road. What road is, are we on right now? We're on Jaffa Road right We're now. We're on Jaffa Road. And anyone who's going to be coming to Israel and coming and visiting Jerusalem, okay, then you're going to be here. All these places we're going to be going today are places that people are going to visit when they come to Jerusalem. For you sure. agree? Absolutely. And so, if you've been here before, nice little trip down memory lane. Exactly. Because you're almost certainly were here. So why do you think this is called Jaffa Road? Well, based on what we learned last time, it led to Jaffa. That's right. There we go. Okay, and you know, if you go to Jaffa, there's a street called Jerusalem Street, right. which leads to... Jerusalem. Now, where in the middle do they change names? That's a good point. I don't have an idea, but you have to get a real tour guide for that. <laughs> <laughs> I think you count as a real tour guide. But this road, this road was initially paved in 1869. Oh, wow. All right, 
So 1869, so I remember also from last time, the last area built outside the old city was only somewhere around there. So it's very early it was paved. It was very early, but you know why it was paved? It had nothing to do really with uh, Jerusalem, except that the Emperor Franz Joseph was coming down to Egypt right. from Europe and he wanted to make a stop in Jerusalem. And right. why was he going down to Egypt? Because of the opening of the Suez Canal. And so uh -huh. then they paid, they decided, okay, well, now we're going to pave the uh, road to, to Jerusalem from Java. And that's when it gets paved. So because one time. bloke comes to visit, we pave an entire road. Exactly. Unbelievable. There's a lot that happened in Jerusalem because of his one visit. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. Okay. So and we're so on the light railway track right now, as I can see. Still going down Jaffa Street. We just passed a kilometer, which is good. Big towers everywhere. What's our next uh, port of call? So we're actually going to get to the marketplace quite uh -huh. uh, in, in a minute. Right. Uh, the Machane Yehuda marketplace. Right. So this began to be like a marketplace again back in the uh, 1860s or whatever. The when there were neighborhoods that were built outside the city walls, which if you remember from last time, yeah, started in 1860. So Moses, come on. Yep, Moses Montefiore, your fellow countryman. Quite right. So. Uh, the Arabs from the local villages around used to come over to this area and they would sell their wares. Right. And this became one of the points. And it got under the British rule, it became so filthy and disgusting that they decided, hey, let's set up something more official. And you have the birth of the, the Machine Yehuda market. Uh -huh. Here's a really good example. You spoke about old versus new. Brand new tower to my left, brand new tower coming out to my right. And yet, some of the buildings on the outsides are still being kept in their traditional look. Yeah. So even though it's not really up. new, it's uh, it's kept to look as if it's old and new. Exactly. Which is very Jerusalemite. Exactly. And until like really recently, you're not going to have any of these high rises around here. No. Which is amazing because we're starting to get towards the center of the city, or at least what they call the center of the city. Yeah. Uh, and if you go to the center of the city in most other places, you have these huge high high rises and everything but not here it's part of the the charm of jerusalem i guess yeah. and everything's built with the uh, jerusalemite stone exactly it's kind of a universal building posse in jerusalem which is also quite rare for a modern city but again jerusalem has that strange mix of being a new old city um, and most of the center of town is devoted to tourism not really commerce that's and true. hence there's no real high rises. That's true. Okay, I can smell bread, which oh can only God. be one thing. <laughs> I know you guys can't smell it, but damn it smells good. Nothing smells better than an old shuck, an old market first thing in the morning, guys. Oh, this is amazing. And we're going to take a little uh, run through there. Oh, you're really going to get my hunger going on. That's yeah, great, yeah. man. See the trucks are all unloading it. And here we go into the marketplace. Into the market. This is like, I feel like we're before it wakes up right now. It is. It's everyone, this is what you can see is all the guys unloading their stuff. Yes, everything is still unloaded in the old way, guys, because you cannot fit a truck in here. So it is literally pallets with boxes on them. This is the way it works. But this is the beginnings. It's like, you're, this is going to turn into some of the most amazing smells and tastes that we have and, and views in the entire city. Yeah, this, this is very market. So this on is my the left, life club. Oh, I love this place right here. Lebanese food. Lebanese food. And on my right coming up, Irish pub. Oh. And every type of spice you can think of. Canapa, Morning coffee. coffee. There's even like a like a, a German bratwurst place in Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's actually quite good. Excellent cheese place, butter. Excellent cheese is there. Really, really very fancy and expensive. Going down that is other parts of the shuk. It is just fabulous. The halva place, one of the more famous places of the shuk. Get your halva. And if you can imagine what this is like with all the vendors hawking their wares, right? Toot banana, banana toot, right? <laughs> <laughs> Five shekels, two shekels. And if you want to know what this place is like at night? Yeah.
<laughs> when we hooked up to start doing this, I didn't know you had magic tricks like that. That's an impressive magic trick. Thank you, the amazing uh, magic of video editing. Ah, oh, this is the Ruggler place. The Ruggler place. The Ruggler place. Yes, it is. They're just getting it ready now, putting some of the bread in the oven. Yeah. It's one of the more famous things that people come to Israel as soon as they come to Jerusalem. They go to the Western Wall, they get the Rogaloch. It's like the most standard thing to do things. So really the time to come to the Shuk is a Friday morning. That's when you're going to see it at its height. Most bustling, most busy, yeah. all types of people from all walks of life. And by the way, you know, what a lot of people see about Israel and Jerusalem, that was like by <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're still alive, guys. People think I'm terrorism is going to kill you. It's really going to be the uh, the construction equipment. Yeah. But speaking of which, people think that when they see about Jerusalem or the Middle East, yeah, uh, a lot of what people see on the news is stuff about like you know terrorism, conflict between the Arabs and Jews. Yeah. Go to the Shuk. If you go to the Shuk, you've got. Arabs, Jews, everybody together selling, interacting. It's an amazing sight. Amazing sight. Yeah. And also, we talk about the old versus new. You know, we're coming really into downtown Jerusalem right now. And supermarkets are obviously a thing we have in Israel. But at the same time, many Jerusalemites still prefer to do their weekend shopping at the Shuk, at the market. Because it's an experience, because it's fun because you, you interact with the person that sells to you. You know, I used to do my shopping in the market when I lived in the area close by. You go to the same people, you sit down, you have a cup of coffee and then you buy your apples. And the produce is great. The like for example, like let's say I want an avocado, it's an avocado season. You go to the supermarket, you get these like rock hard avocados. You go here, it's like, okay, I want an avocado today. Yeah. I can have my choice. And you get the guy's recommendation, which is even better. You pick up the grapes. He's like, no, they're not so good this week. Don't buy them. And then you get his marriage <laughs> advice as well. You know, oh, yeah, definitely point. get his marriage advice. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're back now on Jaffa Road. It's ridiculously quiet, which I like because there's only light railway. There's no cars here. Um, and we're coming up to a main intersection. Right, this is like what they call city center. In fact, this train stop here, they call Jaffa Center. Right. And it's the main crossroad between Jaffa Street and between King George Street. Okay, and it's called King George Street. Blah, 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 blah. Well, why, why not kidding? George of the Jungle. Uh, not George of the Jungle. But uh, George the Fifth from your uh, home country. Ah, my home country. Let's back not again. forget that the British ruled here from 1920 until 1948. Right. In fact, I got to show you this sign. Come look at this. It's the original sign from 1924. Okay. Okay, and I want you to notice a few things about this sign. First of all, King George V Avenue, right? Yeah. That's the name of the street that we have. Wait, well, read another here. line, it gets better. Opened by His Excellency Sir Herbert Samuel, Come High on. Commissioner for Palestine. Okay, we're gonna talk about him in a moment. In the presence of Sir Ronald Storrs, Governor of Jerusalem Jaffa District. Okay, this is during the British Mandate period, right. starting in 1920. Ragib Be El Nashashibi, Mayor of Jerusalem in 1924. Right. The Nashashibi family yeah. is an Arab family that goes way back here in Jerusalem. So on one side, you've got 
the British king. You've got the high commissioner, who is a Jew, by the way. Who is a Jew, and English, and a sir. And the first Jewish governor in this land of Israel in 2000 years. Right. Uh, and you have another British Christian. Yeah. Okay, it's from Ronald Storrs. And an Arab who is the an old family here. Amazing. Right here. Right here. The British are going to come in uh, after World War I. Right. And they're going to receive what's called a mandate over this area from the League of Nations. And the interesting thing is what they're supposed to do is they're supposed to prepare the local population for self-rule. Now, in the League of Nations mandate specifically, it actually talks about preparing the Jews to be able to have self-rule right. in here in the land of Israel. Yeah, how did that go down? So you have to imagine there are some people that were very excited about it and right. some people who are not so Less excited. excited about it. Now, you know, we talk about the Palestinian national movement. Yeah. This is really when it begins. Right. Okay. It doesn't go back that much further. It doesn't mean there weren't Palestinians living here. There were. Yeah. But they always saw themselves connected to Arabs in the greater Arab world. Right. Okay. Things were never run from Jerusalem here for them. It was either from Beirut or Damascus or Cairo. And what caused the Palestinians here in the land of Israel to start their own national movement was when Jordan gets lopped off and Syria and Lebanon get lopped off right. after World War I. And they find themselves, wait a second, uh, guys, it's just us, where did yeah. everyone go? What about us? <laughs> and so you get the beginning of the Palestinian national movement. Unfortunately for them, the Zionist movement, which is the Jewish national movement here, already began. 70 years earlier. Right. So they get a little bit of a head start on them. A little bit slow on the hoof, Mark. So but it always that, takes an external force to come along saying, do this, do that, for people to rise up going, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I want to do what I want to do, and you won't tell me. And so when colonialists come and say, do this, do that, my people again, standard. Yeah, so. You start nationalist rule. Okay. So we're starting to get into the modern beginnings of the what we call the conflict yeah but as we see today there's so much more to this place than that and on a day-to-day -day basis that's not necessarily what everyone's thinking about One of my favorite places in Jerusalem, by the way, over there. Boy, come also. Filo dough, I'm filled so with cheese, you. with a pickled cucumber, Ooh. bit of spicy and peanut on the side. That now is good is, food. What is barakas for people who have never had it? Filo dough. Wrapped up in like a filling in the middle. Um, very Turkish. Um, we'll probably do a little bit about food one time, but one of the main points is that I'm there's no such hungry. thing as Jewish or Israeli food. Everything's just a melting pot of where people came from. So we're going to cut to the left here because we're actually passing the municipality, the modern municipality. It is enormous, City Hall, as we would say in England, we call it City Hall. Well, you know, the funny thing is they made this square that big so that people could have protests, but no one protests there. No, I'm going to go for this place. No, no, no. They go for the Prime Minister's building. <laughs> right. Let's go outside the Prime Minister's office or some other, yeah. place. Oh, or the main, the, the main entranceway to the city where we'll block traffic. You know, for everybody. That's yeah. what they protest. Yeah. Look at this. This is an amazing view. I love this view going down because. Oh, it's fabulous. The walls of the old city right in front of us. Yeah. It's amazing. The light railway cutting through. And really, you talk about, you know, the beginning. There was already interfaith at the beginning, running through the shook. Whilst you're running with us, guys, just look around the people. Just look around the people around us right now. You'll see every type of person you can think of because you're coming towards the old city of Jerusalem and literally every faith colour lives around here in some kind of way or denomination. You know that way? Go on, we'll cut in front of the policeman. We've done Jaffa Road, we've gone past the municipality, we're now Old City. And on the way to Jaffa Gate. On the way to Jaffa Gate. Jaffa Road leads to Jaffa Gate. Who would have thought it? 
when you come to Jerusalem runners and you want to run in a place and just come into one of the better views and I'm gonna say in the world I don't care you're gonna come here because this view is stunning I got the old city right in front of me, Tower of David, new city to my right. We just ran through Jaffa Gate. That's right. Now, we are going to do a proper old city run. We are. So we're not, not going to get into it too much today. We're just giving you a little teaser, guys, a little teaser. There are some hot points in the old city. The Western Wall. Glass will name me some, name me some hot points. You've got the Western Wall. You've got the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. You have the Temple Mount with the uh, Dome of the Rock and the Aqsa Mosque. Yeah, I think I've hit the three main religions right there, huh? Plenty to see, plenty to see. Plenty to see. So and this is the base of the Tower of David. You mentioned the Tower of David? Yeah. Okay, great name, except there's nothing to do with David. Right, nothing, nothing, nothing at all. Right, this is not where David's palace was, but you've got layers here from 2,000 years ago. You have layers here from the Crusaders. You've got layers here from the Muslim period, all in this one big tower that is really like the right. symbol of the old city here. For sure. And we just ran through Jaffa Gate. Again, doing little teasers, guys. How many gates we got? We got eight gates that are still functional. Right. And Jaffa Gate is only called Jaffa Gate? Well, That's what it's known to everyone? Well, no, actually. Oh, okay. It's got a couple other names as well. If we were here a thousand years ago during the Crusader times, uh -huh. they would have called it David's Gate. Right. Right? Because they see here the, all the ruins. Like, oh, this must have been David's palace. This is where the city is, right? Right. But you and I know that the most ancient part of the city down by not, the valley, down by the last time. Exactly, it's not where we are right now. It's no. outside the city wall. The Crusaders don't know that. So right. this is David's gate to them. The Arabs call it the Hebron gate. Uh -huh. Because this is also the main gate that you're going to go out in order to go down to Hebron. Down Hebron Road. Hebron, Hebron yeah. Road. Well, we which is last what time we did well, last guys. time. Check out our last video. Exactly. <laughs> we just crossed over 4K, guys. Doing good. Very nice. And again, but this is the route of the Jerusalem Marathon. So yeah. when you come here and do it, this is the part in the old city you get to do. It's worth coming. We've got three major marathons in Israel. The Jerusalem one is usually the beginning of March, right at the first week of March, as a general. And if you want to come a marathon in an old city with lots and lots of uphills, come and do it. Nothing quite like it. Unfortunately, it was cancelled this year, Corona. Uh, but yeah, you literally, yeah, I don't want anyone to become disoriented. You're inside the city walls. We are inside right now, okay? We're in, what part of the, part of the old city are we in? Well, we're in what's called the Armenian Quarter. How many quarters are there? There are four quarters, but they actually are not divided equally into quarters. So four quarters, which are not quarters. Exactly. Very Israeli, I like it. Again, right. we're all about the names oh, and, the, and the misleading names you have here in the city. Right, okay, so Armenian, we're in right now. Yep. We got what else? Jewish, Christian, and Muslim. Uh -huh. Okay. And we're coming up now in a moment, we're gonna to come to another gate and we're actually gonna go out that gate. It's called Zion Gate. Right. Now, this is actually the gate that in 1948, in May of 1948, right. when the Jewish quarter fell to the Jordanians during right. the War of Independence, right. that all of the residents that were not taken into captivity, they were sent out of this gate. Okay. I'll actually show you a great picture of that in a moment. 
uh, another one of your magic tricks. So, yeah. 1948 Old City Falls, the Jewish residents are forced to leave. Yes. And they're forced to leave via Zion Gate. Yep, and this becomes, the Old City becomes part of Jordan. Guys, we're about 4, 4.3K, coming up to four and a half. So now we're, again, not to disorient anyone, we're outside the Old City we're now. We're outside the Old City walls, right? This yeah. is the Old City to our right here. Right. To the left, you have compounds of uh, churches, convents. And we're going back towards the Armenian Quarter, kind of where we came from, just on the outside wall, right? Now. Exactly. Uh -huh. But you'll also notice as we come over the ridge here, we're going to see across the valley. Right. The first neighborhoods built outside the city uh, walls that we talked into your about. Last run, tying into we your last run. Before, exactly. Right. So Moses. Now you can imagine, though, if we talked about the, the old city was Jordan between 1948 and 1967. Yeah. Okay. Where is the border? The right. border essentially is right, well, where we are and right. in this valley here. So these houses right across the valley. No man's land, huh? Well, you're on your border neighborhood on the Israel side. Right. So is that a place you want to live? No. Or, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely okay? not. So it was really the poorest area of the whole city. Right. But what happens in 1967 <laughs> when Israel takes back the old city right. during the Six Day War. Yeah. What happens to the real estate over there? Is it still not primary real estate? <laughs> it is primary real estate. Prime real estate because the Jews now have control of the it old city serious. for the first time in 2,000 years. Yeah. And everyone wants to be as close as possible as they can. So. Now here's one cool thing I want to show you. Yeah. Right? If you look along the walls. Yeah. All right, you notice there are different layers up on the walls. Right. The Different main size of stone, exactly. Is that what you're the, yeah, the main walls that we see. Yeah. How old are they? It's David's time. King David built them. Over of the course, town of, David, would, of right? course, we would think, right? <laughs> Except we know that not this not. is not David's city. Yeah. Right. And that these walls that we see today are really from about 1535 to 1541. So right. they're only about 450 years old from the Ottoman period. Uh -huh. But this particular area is so cool because you see how in this particular place right. it was built on top of earlier layers. Right, yeah, I can so see that. So really you had ancient times when the air, the, the wall did follow this route, uh, just not the very beginnings of the city. So now coming down the hill, we're coming away from the old city walls a little bit. That's right, and we're gonna come down towards our valley here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, this was one of the one of the ones that was encircled ancient Jerusalem. Right. Okay. Also, it's called the the Hebrew name for it is Gai Ben Hinnom. Okay. okay. Which sounds kind of like Gehenna. 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 What is Gehenna? Right. Hell. Hell. Exactly. Right. That's where they get the name Gehenna from, from this valley, because in the ancient sources they talk about how an ancient cult used to do child sacrifice where they would burn them by fire okay. down in the valley over here. Actually, okay. So, so that's the valley, but really what I wanted to come here for yeah. is the park. Uh -huh. The park is named after uh, an iconic mayor of Jerusalem right. named Teddy Kalk. He was known that when he brought visitors to Jerusalem, he would bring out some wine and some uh, bread, Yeah. and he'd open up his Bible, Right. And he'd read from the very first time that Jerusalem is mentioned in the Bible, I Abraham's time, but it's called Shalem. Right. And the king, if you remember, the king of Shalem was a guy named Malkutetek. Yeah. And after Abraham goes and defeats this alliances of the kings. Right. And he comes back and he meets with Malkutetek. Right. And Malkutetek brings out bread and wine and he offers a blessing to the God on high. Right. And so, Teddy Kalik, yeah. when he brought visitors, he, he brought up bread and wine in the tradition of the, the tradition. first head of this city right. that we know about, Malki Tzedek. I see. So you have a great uh, way to combine the- Continue the tradition. The new and the old here. Love it, love it, love it.
we're here in Teddy Park. We started off, if you remember, right at the entrance of the city, down to the old city, down to here, five and a half K. Most of it was downhill, to be honest. Pretty nice, gentle run overall. Um, really great run when you guys get here. Thank you so much, Michael. Check out our Facebook group, Running Around Jerusalem. We'll see pictures, we'll see the route, we'll get lots of cool stuff going up on there. Subscribe to the video, subscribe to Facebook, and we'll see you next time. Running Around Jerusalem, guys. Have a good one. No, but someone, oh, okay. last, last night someone threw up. Full out, bar had put his head on the stone, lying down, almost passed out completely. Because of your personal training? Because of my personal training, complete kaplooey. Don't put that in the video, because that's not nice. <laughs> you are <laughs> recording. <rude. laughs> I'm definitely putting this in. I'm a nice fitness trainer. <laughs>